Hey! I was very enthusiastic. Okay, so today we're, re we're I'm reviewing Seraphina and the Seven Stars. I didn't know what to do for the summary. I didn't know like if if I could rewrite it because it didn't seem right. Because the summary on this was pretty good anyway. I know y'all could literally look up the summary for it, but I'm just gonna read the summary from the book today because I couldn't figure out how to make my own summary for some reason. Okay. Uh, the, the, the. <laughs> Serafina, the guardian of Biltmore Estate, has won battle after battle against the dark forces and encroaching on her home. That's a weird word. <laughs> now tranquility has returned to Biltmore. Serafina doesn't trust it. She patrols the grounds night and day, hardly sleeping, uncertain of her place after her best friend Brayden Vanderbilt's departure for boarding school in New York. When Mr. Vanderbilt, the kind master of Biltmore, asked Serafina to move upstairs into the house's grandest rooms, she's sure she sure is to keep an eye on the guests who arrive for the estate's annual hunt. But as Serafina investigates, she becomes more and more unsettled by the Biltmore, by what Biltmore has become, a place haunted by nameless terrors. I can't speak today where no dark corridor is safe. Even worse, she begins to doubt her own senses. Is Brayden really hundreds of miles away, or did he return to Biltmore for one strange night before vanishing? Is the bond between them truly broken, or is it stronger than ever? When Serafina witnesses a crime that turns her world upside down, how can all that at once seem good and worthy of protection now be evil? And how can she guard those around her when she can't even be sure of the truth of her own heart. So I'm going to go straight into how much I like the book. This one is my absolute favorite out of the four. This is my favorite out of them all. You want to know my rating is 15 out of 5. It's a 15 out of 5. I went above and beyond on that rating. <laughs> I'm I'm serious because this was my absolute favorite out of all of them. I just, I just love the book. So as I have been saying is the age range. It's still 10 and older because it makes sense. I mean, you can look up the words because there's still words in here that I don't understand, but the book is good. You can figure out what the words mean, so it's fine. I like this book a lot more because of the end, especially. If you read, if you've read the other books, then you know you want something to happen. I know you want something to happen because I wanted it to happen. I'm not going to say it because if you haven't read the books yet, then you won't know. I don't want to do that. But if you've read the books, you know you want something to happen. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Okay. Yes. You know you want something to happen at the end. The very last page. Yes. It somewhat happens. The thing you want to happen, the thing I wanted to happen, it kinda happens. Okay? Okay. You read the story, you understand what I'm talking about when I say, you know you want something to happen. So I have a question. I don't know how many people I'm watching because I don't know because some of y'all watch them and some of y'all don't and there's like 11 subscribers so anyway I have a question for y'all the very few people who are watching I understand it would make sense if if I would do this okay anyway should I review Will of the Wood before I review the book Broken Things? Because I said in the last video that I, or the one before, I don't remember, but I had said in my chat thing on the screen that 
the next book I should review is Broken Things because it's the next one on my list from the summer. Well, I thought of, well, shouldn't I review Will of the Woods since it goes along, since it's, like, going to interact with Serafina at some point, as Robert Beatty says in, like, his author author's note or something in that. I don't remember. I think it was the last one. Yeah, it was the Splintered Hearts author note that he says that. But anyway, um, I don't know if I should do that. I mean, it makes sense to go ahead and review it since it would be... It, connects with Serafina, it's the Robert B. it's another Robert Beatty book book. I can't speak. I can never speak. But um I was just saying maybe should I do that or should I just go to Broken Things and get to Will of the Wood when I read it? Because that's on my list for this school year. And that's gonna be a little while before I get to that one that list. And so I was thinking it would make sense to review Will of the Wood right after this video because it makes sense to do it like that but I still just want to ask anyway. Also if you're wondering why there's this cardboard piece right here is because one of the tadpoles has both of his front and back legs now and so he's sticking on like the side up here and he's like almost getting out and I don't want him jumping out and having a baby frog running around my room. So, yeah, that's there because he's like one of the smallest ones in there. And there's like tadpoles like that big in there. And he's the first one, the only one out of all nine of them to get both his front and back legs. So since I've done all this rambling and stuff, I have reviewed the book like I said I would. I asked you my question. I told about my, my frog. Robert Beatty, he says he wants to watch more of these. I'm, I'm scared anyway. So, hey, if you're watching, Robert, I don't know when we got on a first name basis, but we just did because I said so. <laughs> well, anyways, fly you high, overlanders.